All right, so we just uh, checked in through the gate, which is right down there under those flags. We got lots of cars lined up. It is raining and crappy, but this is what you can expect if you show up at the Porsche Experience Center and corporate office in Atlanta, Georgia. That's the hotel right over there. This road down here is called uh, Porsche Boulevard or Porsche Way or something. You get a visitor pass. Uh, just a tip, the way to get into this place, uh, there's one of two ways. You call ahead about 10 minutes before you wanna come in and you say that you wanna shop in the retail space or you make a, a reservation at the restaurant in here. Uh, one of those two ways will guarantee to get you in. You can see, if you can see through the glass there, we've got all these people doing work, doing Porsche work in their offices. If you sign up for the driving experience, and oh, look at that right there. They've got a whole bunch of, uh, of charging stations. How cool is that? Those were not here last time I was here. Anyway, this is uh, one Porsche drive, and uh, if you sign up for the driving experience, you stay at that hotel right there and they uh, put you on the track with a driver. You can research that, but let's go in and check it out. This is what you get when you walk in. It's a front door that got, looks like an RS right there. Over here on the left is the uh, main desk where you got to check in. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll walk around and I'll show you what this place looks like. So here we are a little closer to this beautiful car. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So that's the retail space right over there. They've got these stairs that go up to uh, corporate office space. They go screen down there on the end. And then when you swing around this way, we've got more cars, second deck. And uh, over there in the corner, we'll take a closer look is the uh, exclusive area where you would pick out exclusive options in person. And then right here is a model of the track. And the track is right out past that bridge. The restaurant is right over in that corner. But this is uh, what you first walk into when you come in right off of the front doors. There's a simulator right back behind that door. And right over here is the retail space with lots of uh, Porsche exclusive product. We've got a bike, clothing, little models, all kinds of neat stuff. We'll just do a quick walk around. There's one associate in here. It's not a very big store, but it is packed with product. They have little model cars that you can actually order, a duplicate of your car, uh, posters, lots of clothing, sneakers. Uh, there's other branded product that Porsche has, uh, I guess, an affiliate or affiliated with. Uh, little club badges, um, race suit here, uh, pretty nice jacket, and uh, you know more coffee mugs up there. And then back here in the corner is the speaker, uh, Bluetooth speakers, sunglasses, more luggage. Uh, in this case here, there's watches, pens, and lighters. Uh, you can see that bike from outside, and then um, up here in the case, there's some higher-end models uh, and a golf bag there, but that's it for the retail space. All right, well, this is the simulator lab. Hey, guys, how you doing? I asked if I could see back here, and at the end of this hallway on the left is the simulator lab. It's pretty neat. Uh, it's just a bunch of, um, oh, nice. you know, setups here. You can... Uh, book time uh, and um, drive on their track. Uh, it's, I think it's uh, $150 for 20 minutes. I think that's the last time I checked, but it's pretty freaking cool. I'll tell you that. This is pretty neat. This lists all their cars. by year, has all the names, a little bit of note on their significance. Oh, 
there you go. How do you like that? My personal favorite. This is the uh, Carrera Cafe. This is different than the actual restaurant. The restaurant's called 356. Carrera Cafe looks like just an area just to grab a snack. Uh, I don't think you need a reservation. Uh, it's pretty neat. It looks out onto the racetrack from a lower level. The restaurant is up higher, but um, kind of neat. Okay, so we saw the retail space, the simulator, and then down that hall was the Carrera Cafe. Let's go up these stairs. Up here is the 356 restaurant. Right here, innovative. Here's that terrace area, terrace bridge. Cars down here. I think that they do deliveries down here. It's a bummer, it's such a crappy day. This is the hallway that goes back to the restaurant and every inch of this place is like a museum. And there is an actual museum uh, down, in the, uh, down in the basement kind of, um, or ground floor, I guess. Uh, but everywhere you look, there's a news article or some kind of facts or story about the company, the cars, or the people. It's, it's really neat to just kind of wander around this place. So here we are in the restaurant. This you do need a reservation for. This looks out onto the track from the uh, second floor, which is really kind of almost the third floor, I guess, um, because of that uh, terrace bridge. But really nice restaurant. Uh, I've eaten here. The food is fantastic. They have a full bar. It's not outrageously expensive. Uh, it's, you know, definitely worth it if you're in town to, uh, to hang out there. Pretty neat um, silhouette there. I love those. Uh, they've got a couple of those in different cars, um, which I like. More art, elevators, and then uh, this looks like the employee lounge, I guess, uh, associate lounge, whatever. Um, it's uh, clean, nice, looks nice, uh, but you know, associates just seem to be going in and out of here all day. Okay, let's go back downstairs. Across uh, from us here is those stairs that go down. That goes down into the shop where you can have your car uh, factory restored. I'll show you that. And then also the museum is down there. I'll show you that as well. But first, let's cross the lobby here. Uh, we've got another race car. I don't know the significance of these cars. There's um, a little plaque next to each one of them. Uh, every time I've been here, there's been different cars. So they, they're definitely active in, in uh, what they display here. Uh, that movie screen back there uh, with the weird light coming in from that window, um, they have something playing different on there every time. Uh, this is one of those sculptor, sculptures that you look at it from different angles and it forms something. I could never get the right angle to figure out what it is. Uh, but right now they have this timeline, uh, it looks like, from their racing heritage. Every time I have been here, I mentioned before that it's something different. Over here is the exclusive area, so I don't think that you actually stand here and order a car. I think that there's another space for that, but if you came here to order your car, uh, it would um, it, you would pick out all of your colors and textures uh, from this area here. Um, there's a couple options that I noticed aren't here, so I'm not sure how current they keep this space. Uh, but it definitely gives you an idea of all the different uh, things that you can choose when you order your car. And it's not just 911s, believe it or not, they, they make other cars. Um, they have different options for different cars. You can see uh, on the top, you can hardly see it now, but you'll see it in a minute, where they have the uh, names for the cars. Well, there's a good example, example right there, Panamera. Uh, but shifters, uh, different leather colors, key fobs it just it just it's endless uh you know carpets leather stitching alcantara carbon fiber wood uh you can really do almost anything you want it's it's almost like uh you're you know on the porsche configurator online uh, but you're actually experiencing it it's actually in front of you so pretty cool space And uh, across from us, behind uh, 
over closer to the window are more cases of different options that you can get. I'll show you that in a minute here. You really have to, if you're real serious about getting a car um, and you were in Atlanta, you could spend just hours here. I remember, you know, when I first got my car, I, I could, you could just spend hours looking at all this stuff, trying to decide what you want. All right, next up is the uh, shop. So you, they don't let you in here, and I'm going to give you just a couple of views uh, from a couple of different angles. This is looking down, you know, from the stairs, obviously. A little bit later on, I didn't realize, but those garage doors are glass, and you can get down there. So I'll show you the, the backs of, you know, some of these cars and more mechanics working on cars. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, here's a full model of the whole property. And you can see what I mean from third floor versus second floor. Uh, the back of the building is lower than the front of the building. Uh, so you get this sensation that you're much higher in the back of the property. Uh, but uh, that's where the uh, restaurant was that we were in, right there. And then uh, that's that weird window by the sculpture. And uh, here's the track. Pretty cool. And sorry about the background noise here. Uh, but uh, that's a kind of a terrace area. And here we go down one more flight of stairs, getting a little closer to the shop. So if you have uh, a, a 911, or you know, I guess any of their cars, and you want them to uh, restore it to using factory parts to factory specs uh, for an enormous amount of money I assume you can make an appointment here uh, they have something like a year and a half waiting list uh, but you can make an appointment here to have your car uh, worked on or refurbished here's a sign that um, advertises what they do Porsche Classic factory restoration. So over here on the left, it begins kind of the museum-ish uh, part of the property. Uh, you've got original equipment, stuff. Uh, it's kind of a good reference to see uh, what, you know, what originally came on your car. You know, those are like porcelain knobs. It's, it's crazy. Here's the original tool kits. Tells you all about it, what's included. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, replicate, the, or not replicate, but purchase this stuff to get your car uh, back into factory shape, here's, uh, here's examples of, of what the stuff looks like. Here's some examples of tool wraps, cleaners, that uh, houndstooth fabric that they make. This is as far as you can get. Uh, later in the video, oh here we go, the, the, uh, I got somebody to let me in as far, oh I guess, I guess I'm not actually in there yet. So keep watching because I do actually get someone to let me at least into this space up until the next piece of glass. Um, but uh, that's kind of the no fly zone. So here we are in the uh, Heritage Gallery. Actually, I forgot what it was called. Uh, but here's just classic cars. I mean, and they're not perfect. They're they've been driven. You know, they're they're also not perfectly clean, which is really kind of funny for a museum. But you know, it goes along with the whole culture. You know, use the car. Uh, there's a couple of these have little stone chips and just various things. I mean, these are these are cars that run and they're always different too. I've been here I think four times now and uh, each time they're different. Uh, it could also be that some of these cars are waiting for customers to pick them up. You know they've been factory restored. I'm guessing there but it would it would seem to me that you know there's some balance between customer cars and you know, classic cars that uh, that they own. 
anyway I'll give you just a, a look here you know at these cars uh, we'll look at each one of them walk around uh, they've got a bunch of cars behind me that are covered up uh, those were not covered previously uh, today definitely is not a very busy day there's hardly anybody in here and for obvious reasons it's it's raining They really do leave you alone, too. There is a curator in here somewhere. You may see him in the background. But they just let you wander around. Now, all these cars were uncovered last time I was here, and I don't know the significance of that Cayenne and that other car. Um, here we have one of their race cars. I, it looks like Formula One. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, but uh, clearly some significance uh, there. Lots of, lots of art on the wall with that car. So I'll try to give you some perspective of where we are. We're on the second ground floor. Um, we're about to go up the stairs to the, uh, to the, I guess, the next level museum. Remember, the front is one ground floor, and then the back of the building is another ground floor because the property is terraced. Uh, so you get these two floors out of the museum area. And the second floor of the museum is where all the little knick-knack stuff is. Um, here you can see the evolution of their badge, and then um, there you go, sculpture there, 1998, doesn't seem that long ago. Anyway, um, here you've got books, and I actually have some of these books, and manuals, and um, service bulletins magazines I mean it's it's just loaded with just all kinds of stuff uh, I think that everything here is either endorsed or was you know issued by the company as opposed to some aftermarket thing uh, but uh, there's a lot of it and if you really take the time to look at each of these uh, books and um, you know artifacts I guess uh, you can actually uh, look look them up on eBay and some of the stuff I've actually found on eBay uh, there's two manuals that I saw here for the first time it's a service manual uh, and I was able to find them on eBay and they're not really available to the public like you know you can't buy them And then, because this space is right on top of the of the lower museum, uh, they've got a bunch of cars in here, and they're all uh, protected. You know, you can't you can't touch them, but they're beautiful to look at. E each of them have a little plaque there telling you the significance of the car. This one down here on the end has the door off. You'll see the door leaning up against the railing there. Not sure why they they did that, but if you uh, have the time and interest, you can read all about it on each one of these uh, plaques in front of each one of the cars. There's the curator back there in the back, just kind of keeping an eye on me. These stories wrap around each of these poles. The last time I was here, this area was a 356 museum. So they had about three or four 356s in this area, and then all kinds of stories all the way around. So they're constantly changing it. Down here on the right is a 914 uh, display. And I can't remember what this was last time I was here, but it definitely wasn't 914. So they are very active with keeping this space different and and fresh. I don't know on what interval they change the stuff, but they definitely want to keep people coming and looking.
This area is where they're staging all the cars for the drivers that are paid to do the driver experience. We're going to actually go out there and, and look at these cars. So I guess they do race in the, in the rain. Uh, but, um, but that's where that area is. And uh, here we are leaving the museum. Uh, this was actually the door that we came in from. And then, uh, oh, wait, I take that back. We're on the second floor. So this is the uh, door that we skipped when we went down the second flight of stairs. I'll show you the employee parking garage. I don't think you can uh, drive in here. And, well, I, I don't know. I I've always had to park outside. Surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, the number of Porsches in the parking lot. <laughs> Thought there would be way more, actually. Anyway, uh, here's where they let me in to this. Uh, little vestibule in between the shop and the rest of the building and uh, I was able to just get up close to the glass here. It's amazingly pristine. Uh, they've got parts laying around but very very clean. There's another shop in the back there that I'll show you from the outside in a second. That was the car that uh, they were polishing earlier. Got shop manuals and stuff. Uh, but. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool to be able to get this close. Uh, they don't let you in here. I, I assume if you have a car in there, they will, but they wouldn't let me in there, that's for sure. Here's looking out again. These, uh, these cars all have drivers in them, and they're waiting to uh, get out on the track. I had to uh, cross the building, cross the lobby, and go all the way on the back side by the track, and uh, really to my right is that bridge area uh, to get out here. This is the only way in or out. There's the uh, ground There's level the back entrance of the for these garages. The ground floor. And that is one here's all of those cars right there. And then up. all these cars, these are lined up to race. I'm going to walk down the wall here and show you. I mean, it's, it's a real working shop. It's just surprising to me. You know, you think of a corporate office as not this, but here we are. I didn't have uh, time today to wait for these cars to go out on the track, and because it was raining, it really wouldn't have been all that great anyway, I don't think, but uh, this is what they do. They uh, have this uh, skid plate that will kick out your rear end, and you'll see this car do it in a minute. In the back, is just a big wet track that uh, you can spin around and check out traction control, I guess. Um, it seems like they have uh, the drivers run through this multiple times. One time with the traction control off, and then uh, we're seeing that happens.
man. Anyway, uh, this was a couple months ago, and obviously a much sunnier day, and uh, get an idea of what you can experience. back at the front of the line, uh, back on the rainy day, and these are just the same garage doors that were on the other side, uh, but it looks like they do deliveries in that area. Um, we're all the way back upstairs now, and I just wanted to show you this uh, business center. Uh, I don't know what they use it for, but every inch of this place is, uh, you know, functional, used for something. That's where we came from all the way down there and here we're just walking along this uh, second level that you saw from the from the uh, staircase down there on the right and none of this space is uh, really for the public uh, you'll see here as I look through the windows uh, on my on my left side here it's just offices and cubes and people people doing work I, I have no idea what they're doing and I don't really think they appreciate me uh, filming them. It's kind of a neat art thing here. It's got, uh, as you walk by, it changes. Obviously, we're looking at the car. And as you pass, you get the man. It's kind of neat. Anyway, more uh, offices. And uh, it's interesting how the tinting on the glass or the vinyl on the glass gets thinner or thicker depending on how badly they don't want you to look through it I guess all right well that concludes our tour of the uh, Atlanta Experience Center uh, thanks so much for watching I appreciate it if you like this video and random videos like this one please subscribe and uh, as always I really do appreciate your views and comments